Welcome back to my channel guys. This week I want to degrease the heads, put them in my blasting cabinet, clean the ports, the combustion chamber. Then what I'd like to do would be to take them out to the vapor blaster and get him to work his magic and bring them up to that nice sheen like I had the rocker covers done with. So that's what we're going to do this week. Let's get into it. So, I've degreased them, I've washed them down with hot water, I've pressure cleaned them, I've got rid of a lot of flaky paint, so now I'll blow them dry, and we will have a play with the bicarb soda, and see how things turn out. The pressure cleaner actually removed a fair bit of the loose paint, but we'll go throw some bicarb soda at them and see how they come up. As you've seen, the bicarb blaster in the cabinet was quite difficult to use. It was very dusty and I only showed you a small portion of what I got up to. I spent quite a long time in there and really it proved to be way too hard. I ended up getting my gravity fed blue point blaster. It worked way better and was able to clean the chambers up, the ports, really fast, really easy. So what I'll do with this one is I'll clean the ports up the combustion chamber, I'll show you how that all works and I'm going to send the heads out to a professional blaster and have them bead blast the heads on the outside parts before I take them to the vapor blasters. So that's what we'll do now is basically give these this combustion chamber a blast and the ports and I'll show you how well this gravity fed blaster works. The heads come out really good. 
I'll blast them with hot water, we'll blow them dry and see what they look like. Now I'm going to remove the cam bearings and the seals. To get the bearing out of this bearing holder, I'm going to heat up my oven to 150 degrees C, put a socket in there so that the bearing can hopefully fall straight into it. I've never done this method before, we'll give it a go, we'll see what happens. And we'll put this in when the oven's hot. So the oven's been preheated, let's see if this works or not. Hopefully it just falls straight into the socket. That was pretty cool, five minutes, it just fell straight out. Now if I can remember to pick it up with some rag and not just grab it with my hand, that'd be a good thing as well. How cool is that? Sweet, let's do the other one. Okay, here we go again. Just like that. Here's the difference that the heat has made. So this piece has been out of the oven for about two or three minutes. It's still quite warm. This head's stone cold and the part will not fit back in because of the temperature difference. Pretty cool, eh? While we're waiting for this bearing to fall out of here, we'll start to tape up the head and to seal it off with some old covers. So now this part has cooled down enough so I can touch it, it's still slightly warm. It's just thinking about going in. So I'll let it cool down to the same temperature, we'll try again. The bearing can't be too far away from falling out of that holder.
the bead blaster reckons three layers of duct tape is what you need to stop the media going through the tape. Fits straight back in now that it's cool. So that's been twice as long as the other cover and the bearing hasn't come out yet. So I'm going to carefully take it out and see if I can get the bearing out. That's why I can't get it to fall out because it's already fallen out. It must have fallen out and I didn't hear it clunk out because it's sitting just here. These hard old gaskets are coming off heaps better. Now they're really hot. The heads are all taped up with the duct tape. Three layers thick. That will protect them from the bead blasting. Also, the threads are protected. Any bearing surfaces. Right, I'll rip it out the blasters now. Here's the frame. I've just collected it from Bunbury Powder Coaters. Brad's done a brilliant job of this frame. They sandblasted it and powder coated it. It's perfect everywhere. So I'm very happy with that. Looks really nice. And it's very bright as well, which is gonna make this bike look really good. He also did the fairing cage. It's like a satin black. Beautiful, a few other parts. Uh, the wheels, he also done a mint job of. So they're at the workshop at the moment, so I'll drag them out and try and upload them into this video as well. So we'll grab a couple of bolts out, and I'll put the first two bolts into reassembling this bike. Here we go. The first two bolts, she's going back together. The scrambler cover should keep the dust off it, keep it nice and warm until I come back down the shed tomorrow night. Back down at the workshop, here's all that awesome vapour blasting that I was talking about. So Daryl at Rusty Specialised Blasting, here's what he can do. These parts are in pretty bad nick. The triple clamp, other parts like that. They're all in this box of tricks here. So anyway, he's done a mint job of that. While we're at the shop, what I want to do is to preheat the oven, put the sprocket carrier on there, warm it up to 150, leave it in there for probably 10 minutes. And then I want to try and drop the new bearings in. They're cold. I probably should have put them in the freezer, but either way, I think this will still work. So let's preheat this for 10 minutes and see if they drop straight in. Okay, that's been preheated to 150 degrees C. In 10 minutes time, we'll see if the bearings fit straight in. That's been about 10 or 12 minutes. See what happens. Doesn't get much easier than that. After the video with me pulling the Ducati apart with a claw hammer, um, there's a few comments of people going, what are you doing with a claw hammer fixing a Ducati? So John Hawkes from Total Tools in Victoria he went to the next level and posted me over a couple of hammers to uh, put the bike back together. So thanks heaps, John, for that. I promise I won't use a claw hammer anymore. I collected the wheels, brought them back home to give you guys a look. So much better than what they were before. So like we said, Bunbury powder coaters, 
I will try and put their info in the description. They've done a mint job. That's the front wheel. We'll look at fitting the bearings soon and also the discs. So while we're checking out some new cool stuff, let's um, check out these parts that Daryl from Rusty Specialized Blasting has done. So you seen that guy there a second ago. Clutch cover. Top triple clamp. Come out beautiful. Intake manifold. Got a couple of those. Just like Christmas. Beautiful. Foot pegs. Great job. What else we got? These are very bad. Sweet. It's a heat sink for the regulator. More foot pegs. I think this model has about six of them. Intake manifold, by the feel of it. Shift rod. Caliper mount. Even the rubber comes up really good, Daryl was telling me. You can blast it and um, yeah, his media just bounces off the rubber. This is like brand new. And a couple of these blokes. So thanks very much, Daryl. You've done a mint job. If you need any stuff blasted, go check him out. Well, that's enough talking. Let's tap out some holes, bolt some parts up onto the bike, kick a few fast goals. I don't have the engine done, so that's where I'd like to be sitting the frame onto, but we'll just bolt some stuff for the frame, I suppose. Keep the dream alive. Flat battery.
Yeah, that probably doesn't look the best. Wait up, what's in the box over here? That's pretty cool. Look at that. You can still buy these things. Brand new. Sweet. Fair bit of difference there. Let's put the new one on. Brand new and genuine. Well, thanks for watching my video. I hope you liked it. I liked making it for you guys. Um, please consider subscribing, leave a comment, leave a like, and I'll see you next week.